Hello, it is my hope and my prayer that what I'm about to share with you honors Canada's Indigenous peoples, the wampum keepers who continue to keep wampum alive as a currency of trust, relevant to our society, and the men and women I had the privilege of serving with both in the Canadian Army and the Royal Canadian Air Force. I'm Tim Petrash, a Canadian of Ukrainian heritage and an independent educator from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I served as a non-commissioned member in the Canadian Forces, first as an infantryman trained to engage in combat, and then as an intelligence analyst analyzing, assessing, and validating potential threats directed against Canadian Forces personnel and aircraft and Canada's sovereign airspaces. My medals are my resume, and they speak to my service, including my time in Bosnia and Afghanistan. They're a gift from the Crown, and they recognize my service to Canada, and they're a part of my legacy. Today, I am reinventing myself as an independent educator, and for over seven years, I'm blessed to work with numerous students as their teacher. A substitute teacher, but their teacher nonetheless. These children represent a wide swath of Winnipeg's population, some privileged, some marginalized. But it doesn't matter which school and where in the city they're in. Privilege and marginalization are ubiquitous. The military left an imprint as to who I am now. And like those kids soldiers encounter in places such as Bosnia and Afghanistan, as an educator, those kids in the hall, the kids in the classroom whom I encounter, your kids, They've also left an impression on me, and I ask myself, how could I do right by them, regardless of who they are and their circumstance? How can I engage them in a way that reflects the value they already have, but cannot yet see it? Two years ago, I started my post-baccalaureate diploma in education, and by happenstance became part of the Aboriginal Prospectus cohort initiated by the University of Manitoba and Louis Riel School Division. Within the space of six courses, I developed relationships with other educators, and I immersed myself in the conversation about what is needed to ensure success for both Indigenous and non-Indigenous Indigenous students within a Canadian context. I learned about residential schools, about treaties, about indigenous perspectives. And I learned about myself and how I could contribute. During the cohort's first course, I became aware of wampum and its importance. Although wampum originates from Eastern Canada and the United States, it captured my attention. Any discussion of political, religious, economic, or social significance was not considered complete without exchanging wampum belts or strings that, that spoke to the issues at hand. It was, and it still is, a currency of trust. The wampum belt which is shown on this slide is a treaty. It's not one of ink and paper, but it was originally made from shell beads and sinew strung into a pattern to make a belt. This one is called the two-row belt, or is the Kaswenta. It's a monomic device that records the first treaty between the Haudenosaunee, the Iroquois Federation, living along the Hudson River, and European newcomers, the Dutch. It's made of purple and white wampum beads carved from quahog shells, and the original belt was created just over 400 years ago, and it ratified a treaty between the two peoples. It's still a significant artifact of political relevance. The white signifies the river, and the two purple stripes represent both peoples traveling down the same river in their canoes and boats. The Iroquois in their canoes, the Dutch in their boats. They're sharing the river, they're sharing the land and its resources, and they're not interfering in each other's affairs. For me, wampum became a connecting file. A connecting file is an antiquated military term from the 1800s, and it refers to a soldier who took up a point that connected two separate army formations operating next to each other. These formations could be a brigade, it could be a division, it could be a regiment, but they were operating independently, but with the same aim and objective. Wampum became the conduit that connected this indigenous perspectives file for me. 
My medal signify to me that as a veteran, the crown would honor my service should I ever need assistance. Now, when I learned of the two world wampum and its significance, I connected it with the treaty medals. And I immediately thought of my own medals and what they represented in terms of relations between the crown and veterans and Canada's First Nations and the treatment they received from the crown. I am continuing to learn what I can about wampum, its iconography, history, and significance. Through wampum, I have learned the relevance of treaties for all Canadians and have shared that with students of all ages. After developing a wampum-based inquiry project linking wampum and storytelling, I've taught children how to design and make wampum-style belts in a way that I trust is respectful of the legacies we've inherited from the Indigenous peoples with whom we live alongside. After almost two years of studying wampum, reflecting on it and its significance, I designed a wampum-style belt that reflects my worldview and philosophy of education. Named the three-block belt, it incorporates elements of the Kaswenta plus traditional iconography from other historic belts. While it was not created by an indigenous purpose, my purpose behind the creation of this artifact was meant it was a rediscovery of a vision, of a, that of a shared vision for this country at a personal level. And it portrays the shared learning uh, between a teacher and a student. The three squares in between the two figures represent social and emotional learning, inclusive instructional practice, and systems and structures, which make up the three block model of universal design for learning. Now, wherever I teach, I bring my belt with me. Sometimes I bring it out and I share it with my students, and, and the response, especially among Indigenous and Métis students, has been reaffirming. Several weeks ago in a suburban Winnipeg school, an adolescent boy of Métis heritage was especially drawn to it, and he was able to tell me the gist of what it said. For him, it was a particularly powerful piece. While I do not always share it with my students, it does remind me as to who I am in the classroom for. Soldiers often say that you can leave the army and your regiment, but it never leaves you. That is true. However, through time and the support of like-minded professionals who welcome me back into education, my past is becoming background. I'm building a new future, and without marginalizing my personal history, I'm able to offer a perspective and a voice that any student, Indigenous or not, would find credible. A few months ago, I shared my wampum journey and the belt I made which reflected the wampum bird, a traditional Haudenosaunee story with an Anishinaabe storyteller. She told me that I was one of those people who was keeping the tradition of wampum and its significance alive. To her and all who have welcomed me into this ever-expanding circle and continue to inspire and encourage me, chi miigwech, as I continue to paddle my canoe down that river alongside yours as we continue the life journey until our Creator calls us home.